during these two days, we had a fantastic um, set of discussions uh, about the fast pace of change that is happening in the region uh, that leads to a large number and large proportion of older people coming into uh, part to be a significant part of our society. Uh, and thinking about longevity as a positive way, so it's, there is a lot of positive uh, payback for having more older people, but it's how to draw on that positiveness. Um, we've heard about different approaches coming from the top down, from big international organizations, to invent, in, you know, uh, interventions and innovative solution coming from the bottom up. Within these discussions, gender and life course were prominent in the discussion. We cannot ignore gender and the gender role. And we cannot think of older people as just a category at the end of life. It's cumulative uh, of all the life course. Um, and positives become bigger positives, negatives become uh, bigger negative. Um, and any interventions that we need to implement has to have this life course approach uh, within it. We, we heard about uh, aging perceptions and how we need to change uh, some of this and the role of media and the, and the role of social connections in changing behavioral. So the World Bank spoke about behavioral change and think about uh, longer lives and uh, productive lives, uh, but also the, the, the kind of rights, the human rights of people, the human rights of older people to live their lives to the full, but also to have access to adequate um, kind of care and support when it's required. We talked about the need of data um, and how the data is scarce in our, uh, in our region and we were very um, positively uh, happy uh, with the new development of the potential share study in Egypt and we, we listened to the validation uh, of the HCAP. Uh, so that's really positive direction. Workforce development came you know, uh, across and throughout the, the two days, um, how to attract people to this work, how to understand the roles and tasks, how to train them, how to, tr to retain them, uh, and how to uh, build trust with the, with the people that they can, uh, they can utilize them. We talked about the workforce development as positive, not only for older people, if they do the right, um, you know, provide the care in the right way, it will elevate the burden of informal care, but it also um, uh, will help the workers themselves uh, to capitalize and to mobilize them into the labor force, which is particularly important in a region where we have very high unemployment rates, uh, especially among women. Um, we hear that it's not, a, it's not an easy task. We've learned from some international learning from the UK uh, that, you know, even in Europe, they're still struggling uh, about uh, how to uh, prepare a career pathway that is, um, you know, uh, adequate for the long-term care workforce and how the, the long-term care workforce is different from the health care uh, workforce and how it's perceived differently by the workers and by the population. Uh, we also talked about the, the need for regulations and standards. So we can't allow the market to grow uh, organically. We need the states to shape the market, to set standards, to set regulations, um, and that would build trust um, and, and allow people to purchase care in a way that it is right at the right price and in the right way for them. We've heard about many international policy framework, but also fragmentation in the implementation and uptake of these frameworks from different governments, from different localities. And how is it important to have the buy-in, to have the commitment, and to have the commitment behind it in terms of uh, funding in terms of, uh, in, you know, enforcing policies, in terms of working with NGOs and working with the private sector through uh, adequate protocol. And the importance of monitoring and evaluating. So we've heard about many initiatives that then dies out because there is not much monitoring or evaluation or the availability of charitable money, but there is no way to keep an eye on how that is being used and implemented in, in the right way. 
Uh, so really, um, you know, kind of one of the, today we talked a lot about social connections and about the Commission for Social Connections, and I'm very proud to say that I am one of the members of the technical advisory group, so I'm trying to keep an eye on the, uh, you know, um, representing some of what's happening in the region. But also we heard about the reality of social connections in the region, particularly for older people, and the assumptions that we say, because we're a collective society, then older people are connected. You know, we, we, uh, they, they, they are well connected, and then hence they are prevented for, or, or the risks of loneliness is mitigated. But reality, when we look at data, uh, is not the case. But it's not only this, because the literacy rate among certain age groups, the, the social connection is very important in the uptake of a healthy behavior uh, and to achieve this behavioral change that the World Bank and Gustavo talked about, um, you know, yesterday. Um, we need to have very clear short and medium and long-term um, actionable points and recommendation. And uh, Sarah Salman from the UNESCO yesterday talked about that, how we can break down what we need to achieve into short-term, uh, you know, medium-term and long-term. The problem is, what we heard also, is the lack of visionary approach, that we need this visionary approach, uh, whether by making the case that this is, there is a positive return or actually there will be a catastrophic return if we didn't act. So it actually goes two way. Uh, so, so really what comes to me, there are a need for awareness, perception, working together as a society, but that is supported by tailored policies that is backed by a vision and backed by commitment. This is financial commitment or support commitment. We need to have training that is adequate to what we want to achieve. So the issues of supply and demand. And again, um, we can't be gender blind to these issues. So we've seen how gender affects who does the care uh, and how it's perceived. Uh, and how women at later age also um, suffer from loneliness and suffer from being alone in their homes. Um, so at this note, I think the positives that I take that there is a huge interest in this topic. We have seen many of the big international organizations joining us in these two days, uh, which a fantastic and significant sign uh, that this is something that we cannot ignore. Um, and we will continue the dialogue. And I'm very, very pleased that the Menara Network had a role to play in this activity and bringing uh, you know, all these stakeholders together. Gonna end with a round of thanks, actually. So I'm really grateful to the American University in Cairo to host this two days meeting. Uh, I'm, I'm really delighted to, with the collaboration with Professor Mohammed Salama in particular. Um, I'm so grateful to all the esteemed speakers that have shared with us their knowledge and their experience and their passion. So many of uh, you have talked uh, with passion about the topic. Uh, that is not like something that you take lightly. And also I'm very um, grateful to the participants. We had a lot of young people coming over the two days and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy about that, that. It is a topic for young researchers and, and people who are working in the field uh, that have interest to them. Um, I'm grateful to the technical support. Without that, we wouldn't have done any of this. It's very difficult to do the hybrid meetings and there has been a lot of technical glitch to the last, you know, at the last minute, but the technical team have taken this on their stride and was very, were very calm um, and, and dealt with all these issues to have a fantastic experience for people sitting here and also people online. I'm so grateful to the interpreters. Uh, they have done a really good job. It's very difficult, and many people have been switching between Arabic and English, so I'm really grateful for their patience. Uh, I'm grateful to the catering staff, to people who have prepared everything, made it a very neat um, and, and a very enjoyable uh, session. Thank you, everybody.